Jesus be with all of us today and always. Welcome to the program Spiritist Teachings, where we are going to show you classes of the course Basic Notions of Spiritism. The course Basic Notions of Spiritism is the first course of the introductory cycle of studies of the Spiritist Center. Today you're going to watch a very important class perhaps the most important class, about God. And if you want to reproduce this class in your spiritual center, pay attention to the material that we use in each class. So first, we use this book called Get to Know Spiritism. And this book contains all the 14 classes and it's used in every single class by all students. We also have a book that we use in the moment of self-enlightenment called Agenda of Self-Enlightenment. This book is not just used during, during the classes, but also at home, every day at home, as a method of self-enlightenment. We also use a book from Emmanuel called 2000 Years Ago. This is the book of uh, the support of our studies used in the moment of self-enlightenment as well. Um, in every class, you're also going to need um, an attendance sheet that we're going to take attendance every class at the beginning of each class. For every class, you're going to find in our website that is here on the the on the screen and you can go online and you'll find a lot of materials. You're going to find all the slides as well as the plan of class, of each class, explaining each moment what we're going to be using, uh, suggestions of techniques, of group studies, and so on. These are some of the materials that you're going to need. So you're going to need a little box with candies inside Candies of two colors or three colors, depending on the number of groups you're going to use. Um, you're also going to need a white paper where people are going to draw or represent their definition or representation of God. You can use markers, crayons, colored pencils as well, so they can write or draw what they like. You're also going to um, have uh, some papers with the numbers of the groups and you're going to place on the wall just to help the students to know where to go as well as instructions for each group the questions they're going to answer the items they're going to read and so on it's all in the in our website for free download we are also going to use a memory game and here we have uh, cards with some um, questions and the answers, basically uh, attributes of deity and the explanation, and you're going to prepare all of this in advance as well. So for the class today, the instructor will be Maria Mesquita. May you all have a great class. Enjoy. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Hi. Please take thank a seat. You. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Very good. Thank you. All right. Welcome, Hi. everybody. Let's take a seat. Hello, Nelly. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you again. Hi. Please take a seat. Thank you all for coming. Very happy you're all here today. And we're going to begin with our prayer. So let's all close our eyes and elevate our thoughts to the Lord. And say thank you for this opportunity to be together here, to learn, to learn about our lives, to learn today about our Creator. We ask the High Spirits to inspire us and open our minds for new understanding. So be it. Welcome, everybody. 
very happy you're all here. We are going to begin with our attended sheet. So I'm going to ask if you guys are present. You can say, I'm here. So let's begin with Anna. Okay. Sida. Very good. Julio. Judith. Good. Magda. Very good. Nelly. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I'm very happy you're all here. Everybody came back from our last class, so we are very happy. During our first moment, as we uh, discussed last week, we're going to have a moment of our self-enlightenment. And for that, we are going to have a few different moments. The first moment is of a free conversation. So you guys are free to choose one friend, and you're going to be talking for a few minutes about your week, about anything that you want to talk. Just remember that Jesus is here with us in this room and is going to be participating with our conversation. So feel free, choose a friend in two, in pairs, and you can start talking. So this moment is done. Thank you so much for helping us with that. Now we're going to go for our second moment, which is the, our study support, which is the book of Emmanuel uh, 2,000 years ago. Did everybody read? Did you have a chance to read? Very good. So I would like a volunteer to talk a little bit about the first chapter that we're going to study, which is the uh, intimacy of em uh, Emmanuel. Who would like to, to talk? Uh, it seems to be a really beautiful story. Uh, it, they talk, it's a story in the, that it's, uh, they talk about the past, and I think I'm going to really like to, to read it. Oh, thank you so much, Magda, for your feedback. We appreciate it. Well, this book is a very important book. This book tells us the story of Emmanuel, who was pubulentalist at Jesus' time. And his story will definitely help us and give us strength with our own inner enlightenment. So I invite you all to read. We're going to study a little bit every, every week when we come back. Now we're going to go to the third part of our inner enlightenment program. We're going to do a self-evaluation. So everybody's welcome to get your agenda. And if you don't have a pen or a pencil, I'm going to hand you one. We are done with this first moment of self-enlightenment and we're going to start the first chapter, our first class of the book Basic Notions and we're going to begin with God. So to, today we're going to start talking about God and in, in order to, for us to begin, I would like to know from you what is God for you? what God means to you, but you don't need to speak. We are going to have an activity and you are going to use this piece of paper and you can either write what God means to you or you can represent with a drawing, okay? A drawing or something that you want to write. And we have colored pencils, we have crayons. Would you like something? Any color? So now, what we're going to do is, you are go I'm going to ask you to switch with your, to the person on your side. 
So we're going to switch your work of art. And then I would like a volunteer, or a few volunteers, to talk about what do you think? What do you think that this drawing or these uh, words represent God to that person? Any, any volunteers? Oh, please. Well, I, I think the representation of God that Judith uh, drew was very similar to what I think as God as a creator. She, she showed nature, flowers, the sun. She wrote the words beauty, color, love, creation, uh, gift, smell. And it's very beautiful and very similar to what I thought. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. It was very nice. Any other volunteer would like to help? Could I give my opinion? Please. For what she represented God here, she, at first she, she wrote, God represents everything. And for me, and, and she wrote air, wind, water, animals, and she drew us. She, I think almost everyone here did the same thing. And this for me represents God as a supreme intelligence. He did everything. He created everything. And this is how I can um, read her, her drawings here. So now we're going to, before we begin, or to begin, we're going to watch a beautiful movie called God. This movie was produced by the International TV of Spiritism. And we're going to watch right now. You can put your, put your uh, uh, clipboards away and so, so we can watch the movie. You can give it to me. Você tem tempo, porque eu vou te contar uma história. Eu aprendi que o universo é bem grande e tem mais de 100 bilhões de galáxias. Sabe quanto é um bilhão? Meu pai disse que é muito e é mais de mil. E em cada uma dessas galáxias tem mais de 100 bilhões de estrelas. E que elas às vezes são bem maiores que o nosso Sol, que eu acho bem grandão. Em volta da maioria dos sóis, tem um montão de planetas, igual ao nosso. Às vezes bem grandão, às vezes bem pequenininho. E o nosso planeta é tão lindo. Tem mares, tem plantas, um monte de animais, super legal. E tudo funciona direitinho. Só no nosso planeta tem mais de 7 bilhões de pessoas. Tem gente de tudo quanto é jeito, em tudo quanto é lugar. E isso contando só os vivos, hein? Tem gente na China, no Japão, na África, na Europa. E no meio de tanta gente, meu pai achou a minha mãe. Meu pai também me contou que o corpo dele tem mais de um trilhão de células. E que eu nasci quando juntou uma célula dele com uma célula da mamãe. E olha que deve ser muito difícil achar uma célula, porque ela é muito pequenininha. E é graças a isso que hoje eu estou aqui, brincando e aprendendo. Então, quando alguém me pergunta se Deus existe, ou me fala que a célula do papai encontraram a da mamãe, entre um trilhão de células, entre 7 bilhões de pessoas, entre vários planetas, entre bilhões de sóis, em bilhões de galáxias. Foi tudo um tal de acaso? Eu falo. Você tem tempo? Porque eu vou te contar uma história. Did you like the movie? Wasn't that a nice, nice video? Well, this movie 
basically talks about the existence of God, right? Proofs of the existence, of evidences of the existence of God. And now we're going to introduce the subject. Definitely God is one of the most important subjects that we study in this book. And today we're going to try to cover the Spiritist view of God. What is God? You all try to represent what is God. Kardec was also curious about it. And in the first question of the Spirit's book, he asked, what is God? And the Spirits gave the, the answer, God is the supreme intelligence, first cause of all things, defines God as the creator. So he's the cause of everything. And he is supreme intelligence. Our intelligence is limited. God's intelligence is supreme. Emmanuel, in the book Our Daily Bread, talks about God being a loving and just Father. And he says, the most elevated concept of God that we can keep in the sanctuary of the Spirit is the one that Jesus presented to us in revealing it as a loving and just Father, awaiting our testimonies of understanding and love. So God is not punitive anymore. God is loving. Lo God is just. And Emmanuel reminds us of what Jesus said about God the God introduced by Jesus, which was the Father, our Creator. What about the existence of God? Kardec also asked about the existence. He asked the question, where can be found the proof of the existence of God? And the spirits answered, in a maxim that you apply to your sciences, there is no effect without a cause. Look for a cause of all that it is, not work of man, and your reason will answer. Basically, if we look at the universe, everything that is not cre our creation, our reason tells us that there is a superior being, something else that is the cause of all of that. Because it couldn't be our creation. It couldn't be, we couldn't even try to reproduce, be able to reproduce that. So looking at the universe, the universe itself, the work of creation is the biggest evidence of the existence of God. As we saw in the, the video, correct? It was probably inspired in this answer. Kardec in the gospel according to spiritism talks about God again. The name of a being who is supremely great and wise is written on all the works of creation. From the humble grass and the smallest insect up to the stars and planets in space. Everywhere we see proof of a paternal solicitude. Again, talking about nature showing us that there's something above us. So now, just to continue our learning process, we are going to have two groups of studies. And for that, I brought some candies. And I'm gonna, you guys, each one of you choose a little candy and the color of your candy, the candy will determine your group. Okay? Thank you. Everybody has a little candy. And the color of the wrap, as I said, will determine your group. So we have two groups. Group one and group two. The light pink will be group one, and you can come and form a little group over here. The darker, darker pink can go 
over there. So group one can come over here. Form the group here. And group two mm -hmm. will be here. So now that you are divided into groups, you're going to study the attributes of deity, okay? And this is inspired in the basic books of Kardec, especially Genesis. And pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to read the book, okay, chapter 1, the attributes of deity, and the group 1 will, will talk about these attributes, supreme and sovereign intelligence, eternal, immutable, and immaterial. Then you're going to make comments within the group about these attributes, try to understand, read, and then you're going to choose a speaker that will come here and share with the larger group. And group two will do the same with the attributes all-powerful, sovereignly just and good, infinitely perfect and unique. And then you're going to discuss, make comments, choose a speaker that will share with the whole group. All done? Okay, so now I would like that the speakers that you chose come up here and you're going to share with the group. So please, come on. Are you going to be the speaker? So you can come, please. So, speaking about God, we decided, uh, or we figured out, that for being God, He has to be perfect. And being perfect, He passes through the attributes of being supreme intelligence, supreme moral evolution, and uh, how... Uh, he, who, he should be eternal, should, be, should have no end, no beginning, and he should be not material as we are, because matter would come to an end. And in group two, we studied that God is all-powerful, and for us this makes so much sense, because if he was not uh, the, the being that is all-powerful, some other being will be this powerful and will take over. Um, we also studied that God is just and good. He's infinitely perfect and unique. And uh, actually these attributes, they are very correlated to each other because his, his justice and goodness is above all that we can even imagine. Okay, so now I would like everybody to come back again to the semicircle. You can move the chairs. All right, thank you. Now that we are back in the semicircle, I would like two volunteers to help me with something. So, do the table over here. Thank you for the help. So, please, the table. Okay. So, now we are going to have a game called Memory Game. We all know this game from kids. It's a kid's game. And it's going to help us to retain in the memory the attributes of God. Memory Game is going to help us to retain the subject. And each card will have an attribute of God. And we're going to put them over here in order. And the blue cards will have the attributes, okay? So you guys can come over here. You're going to choose two cards and see if they match. So try to make sure they are in the same place so th the next can try to find. Please, Anna. God is eternal. If it were subject to change, the laws that govern the universe would have no stability. Is so it it's same? no, it's not. No, okay. So put in the okay. same place. And now, Magda. God is material. Um. 
its nature differs from everything that we call matter. Otherwise, it could not be immutable, for it, for it would be subject to the transformations of matter. Material. Very good. All right. So Thank you. Good. That was a good game and help us to remember the attributes of deity. And Kardec asked the spirits in the spirits book, can man comprehend the essential nature of God? And the spirits say no, because he lacks the sense required for comprehending it. And Kardec continues asking, Will man ever become able to comprehend the mystery of the divinity? And the spirits say, When his mind shall no longer be obscured by matter, and when by his perfection he shall have brought himself nearer to God, he will see and comprehend him. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Uh, I have a question. Uh, it's about God being immutable. Um, how can can He be immutable? How can He cannot change? If in the in the time of Moses, for example, God was more punitive, and Jesus brings a notion of God being love and being this paternal uh, being, more like a father. So is is the is God changing, or is the concept of God changing? This is my question. Thank you. That's a very good question. Well, the notion of God is definitely changing, but it's not God that is changing. We are changing. Humanity is changing. The incarnate spirits are changing. They are evolving. So then our concept, our understanding of God will also change. In the past, we would see many, many uh, philosophies that believed in multiple gods, for example. Now, it's almost clear to everybody that God is just one. For Spiritism, our vision is that God is just one. We're going to see in a few minutes. But definitely, God is just. God is good. God forgives. And in the past, it was a little bit different. But God is not changing, actually. We are changing. God is immutable, but we change as we evolve. God is also all-powerful. He can do anything. He's the supreme power. Of course, God created the divine laws. And all God's actions will follow the same laws. But God is all-powerful. God is sovereignly good and just. So, God is infinitely good and fair to all His creatures. But then one might think, wait a minute, if God is so just and so good, how come I have so many bad things happening in my life? Sometimes like people lose a child very early or, you know, a disease, a fatal disease. And that's also a very good question. But at the same time, in our course, Basic Notions, we'll have the opportunity to extend our knowledge and understand why God is just, infinitely just and good. We're also going to study about reincarnation. And through the laws of reincarnation and cause and effect is how God acts on helping us to reach perfection. So everything in the creation is just and good even though many times we, as, their, as His creatures, lack the understanding, the comprehension of this justice. Infinitely perfect. Of course, God must be perfect. Otherwise, something could be better than God or could be more perfect. So without the infinite perfection, something would lack to Him or to it. So God could be better. So we imagine God as this infinite uh, perfection, unique. So God is just one. And one, otherwise, one could be different if he was more than one. So God would be this being that is superior and 
better than everything else. So now we're going to talk about the divine providence, which is so consoling to our understanding. So Kardec says, the divine providence is God's solicitude toward his creatures. It is everywhere. It sees everything. It presides all, even the most intimate ones. It is in this that the providential action constitutes. So Kardec is talking about God as the creator, as the father, looking over its creatures, making sure with his laws that everything is taken care of. So we don't need to worry about too much. We just need to do our part because the divine providence is looking over us, is making sure everything will happen the way that will provide us opportunities to evolve and to be happy one day. Alain Kardec, again, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, says, On all sides we see proof of a paternal solicitude. Blind, then, is the one who does, does not recognize your works. Prideful is the one who does not worship you. And ungrateful is the one who does not give thanks to you. This is a prayer in the gospel, uh, according to Spiritism, saying about God's worship, worshiping God, recognizing that God is in charge. We are just children of God, but a superior being is in charge of everything. So we must recognize, we must humble ourselves to the presence of God and accept God's design and also be thankful, be grateful for life and even for the difficulties that we have because sometimes difficulties, the pain, will bring us opportunity to grow and that's divine providence taking care of us. So this is another prayer of the gospel according to Spiritism and it says, Lord, we believe in you because everything about us reveals your goodness and your power. The harmony of the universe is proof of a wisdom, a prudence, and a foresight which surpasses all human faculties. So if we just stop for a minute and think about the universe, about everything that we see, we reach this conclusion that God is there, God is superior, God is taking care of us, and God surpasses all of us in intelligence, in goodness, in fairness, and everything. In the book Universe and Life, our friend Audio also will talk to us about God in a very profound way. And he talks about the mind of God, paternal mind of God. And he says, the entire universe lives within and is penetrated by the cosmic and vivifying fluid that comes from the paternal mind of God. God is our life and our light, our essence and our destination. Isn't that beautiful? So we live in God. We are penetrated in this fluid that comes from God, which Audio calls the paternal mind of God, God as the Father, God as the Creator. So God is our life, our light, our essence, and our destination. That's where we are going. We are going toward God. So Audio continues talking about the mind of God. We exist and evolve to know it to know God, to love it, and to fulfill ourselves in it. Through the uncountable eras, its divine love guides and supports us. 
this supreme being lives in us and we live in it. So in the book Universe and Life, and this is so beautiful because it talks to us about how small we are, how little. We are like little specks in comparison to God. And we are going toward our Creator. And we need to think about that. And that's why we begin our course with this amazing class about God, this knowledge that many times we don't have. We don't think about God in this way. We don't think sometimes we forget that God is supporting us. God is taking care and we need to know it. And as we evolve, the spirits will teach us that at some point we're going to know more about God. We are going to understand more about God. Right now, we don't understand a lot because of our lack of understanding and uh, faculties to understand even some of the characteristics of God. So the, through the time space of our limitations and sorrows, one day we will reach perfection in the paternal bosom of the Creator. In wasting the riches of life, we harm what it is of our celestial father, which tolerates and teaches us. Again, talking about when we reach perfection, we understand God a little bit better. But right now, every time that we waste good things of our lives and the riches of our lives, we harm what belongs to the celestial father, even to our own bodies, because our own bodies don't belong to us. They belong to God. So we are just using, we are using our planet, we are using nature, we are using the little things that we think we own, but actually everything is from God and we need to respect, we need to know that everything has a superior purpose in life. What about worshiping God? We know that throughout the ages, Humanity also, as well as the notion of God, has evolved in ways to worship God. In the past, we thought we needed to kill animals in order to please God. And then we, this concept evolved as we evolved as well. And in the Spirit's book, Kardec asks this question, in what consists worship? So how can we honor God and worship God. And the spirits answer saying this in the elevation of the thought to God. Through worship, man's soul gets nearer to God. So when we elevate our thought to God, we are worshiping God. Why? We know that God is all justice. God is the creator. So when we elevate our thoughts to God, we move our thoughts away from ourselves. So we become less selfish. And that's a good way to honor God. In the Spirit's book, another question. Does God have a preference to those who worship it according to any particular way? So Kardec is asking, is there a way to worship God that pleases God the most? And the spirits, one more time, will, will give us their enlightenment, their knowledge, saying, God prefers, prefers those who worship it from the heart, with sincerity, and by doing what is good and avoiding what is evil to those who honor it by ceremonies which do not render them any better than their neighbors. So the spirits are saying to us that God prefers when we worship it with actions that come from inside our hearts, making ourselves better people. Otherwise, what good would it be? 
if we just do external things, right? This is not going to be just like for us when our children want to show us something. Don't we prefer that they are good, better people, that they love more, that they forgive more than if they would, I don't know, stop eating for a day or two or um, stay on their knees, knees for hours? I don't think that would please a parent. But even if it does, God is a lot superior than us. And the spirits are telling us that by getting better is when we please God the most. By, and not necessarily by ceremonies and rituals and doing sometimes even harm to others. Like in the past, we thought that if we killed an animal and offered it to God, God will be pleased However, this is an external demonstration, and we should strive for the internal by getting better. And to, f to finish our class today, uh, we would like to remind everybody that our studies continue. In our class, we, have a, 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 we study the chapters, but we also invite everybody to continue reading uh, books, for example, like the book Our Father, and this book talks about the prayer, our Lord's Prayer. Many times in an easier, easier language that you can use for children, for youth. The Spirit's book, of course, discourses basic notions of Spiritism. And a lot of it comes from this book, which is the first book uh, of um, Kardec's works. So it's a very, very important book that contains pretty much... Um, what well, we are studying here, but we, are, we, we go a little bit outside too to get all other authors in this course. And the book, Beautiful Cases of the Alta de Souza Fraternal Campaign, which is a work of uh, charity that we do here in the Spiritual Center. And this book will tell us beautiful cases, things that happened with homes, with people that... Um, were visited by our workers of the campaign. So here, an invitation for us to continue studying at home and making sure that we have a good company of a good book, right? We will never be alone if we have a good book, and that will be the support for our course. So that was it for today. Now that we are done with our class, I would just would like to remind you to continue with your self-enlightenment uh, program. Make sure you do every day. Make sure you read your book and be prepared for next class. Our next class is Jesus. And now I would like to invite everybody for the prayer. And then we can give fraternal hugs right after. Okay? So, dear God, once more, we would like to thank you for this wonderful moment of study that we could together understand a little bit more about you and about the creation. Please come with us to our homes and to our workplaces and especially in our hearts. So be it. So now let's give fraternal hugs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.